Hello, everyone. My name is Shannon McGinnis. I am lecturer in vocal coaching at the Chicago College of Performing Arts at Roosevelt University. I am joined today via Zoom by 11 outstanding young artists who are undergraduate and graduate level voice performance majors at CCPA. These students have been enrolled this semester in Language Skills 4, which is the final segment of the Language Skills or Diction curriculum at CCPA, a sequence that ends in the study of English diction. Under normal circumstances, these students and I would have wrapped up our in-depth study of English diction with in-class vocal coaching and final performances of American art song repertoire. That was not meant to be this semester for obvious reasons. And so I decided that our time together would be very well spent by exploring poetry away from musical setting. For this project, I asked students to choose a work of poetry that they felt was reflective of or relevant to this time of social isolation and concern for our future. The students and I met one-on-one -on -one to discuss issues of pronunciation, enunciation, expression, and communication. Today's presentation is the result of hard work, exploration, self-reflection, practice, and I hope personal discovery. My students and I are proud to share this work with you, and we hope that these words this poetry will resonate with you as we navigate these challenging times apart from one another, but together in spirit. Hello, my name is Marcella Osa. I will be reading uh, Bert Norton, number five from Four Quartets by T.S. Eliot. I've chosen this poem specifically because, first because it's one of my favorite poems of all time and second, because um, it's so, when I read it, it, it brings me into uh, living in the moment um, and how time is moving and still at the same time um, and how we as humans waste so much time in focusing on past and future instead of living in the present, which is something that is really important and helpful to think about during this time. Um, so I will be reading that. Words move. Music moves only in time, but that which is only living can only die. Words after speech reach into the silence. Only by the form, the pattern, can words or music reach the stillness as a Chinese jar still moves perpetually in its stillness. Not the stillness of the violin while the note lasts, not that only, but the coexistence, or say that the end precedes the beginning and the end and the beginning were always there before the beginning and after the end and all is always now. Words strain, crack, and sometimes break under the burden, under the tension, slip, slide, perish, decay with imprecision, will not stay in place, will not stay still. Shrieking voices, scolding, mocking, or merely chattering always assail them. The word in the desert is most attacked by voices of temptation, the crying shadows in the funeral dance, the loud lament of the disconsolate chimera. The detail of the pattern is movement, as in the figure of the 10 stairs. Desire itself is movement, not in itself desirable. Love is itself unmoving, only the cause and end of movement, timeless and undesiring, except in the aspect of time, caught in the form of limitation between unbeing and being. Sudden in a shaft of sunlight, even while the dust moves, there rises the hidden laughter of children in the foliage. Quick now, here, now, always. Ridiculous, the waste sad time. 
stretching before and after. Thank you. My name is Amy Gad, and I will be reading Conversations from Mary Oliver's book, Dog Songs. <laughs> One, said Bear, I know I'm supposed to keep my eye on you, but it's difficult the way you lag behind and keep talking to people. Well, how can you be keeping your eye on me when you're half a mile ahead? True, said Bear, but I'm thinking of you all the time. Two, I had to go away for a few days, so I called the kennel and made an appointment. I guess Bear overheard the conversation. Love and company, said Bear are the adornments that change everything. I know they'll be nice to me, but I'll be sad, sad, sad. And pitifully, he wrung his paws. I canceled the trip. I picked this poem because uh, I know a lot of dogs are happy that their humans are here, even though they had to cancel their trips and they are home. Hi everyone, my name is Rosa Gomariz. The title of my poem is Solitude and is, it was written by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. I picked this poem because it talks about the re reaction people have to our own reactions. And I think that it is in this moment uh, that we live, everything affects us, us much more because practically those relationships are the only thing that we have. So. <laughs> love, and the world loves with you. Weep, and you weep alone. For the sad old earth must borrow its mirth, but has trouble enough of its own. Sing and the hills will answer. Sigh, it is lost on the air. The echoes bound to a joyful sound, but shrink from voicing care. Rejoice, and men will seek you. Grief, and they turn and go. They want full measure of all your pleasure, by but they do not need your woe be glad and your friends are many be sad and you lose them all there are none to decline your nectared wine but alone you must drink life's gold feast and your halls are crowded fast and the world goes by. Succeed and give, and it helps you live, but no man can help you die. There is room in the halls of pleasure for a large and lordly train, but one by one we must all file on through the narrow aisles of pain. Hello, my name is Taylor Trentum. Um, I will be singing, or not singing, I will be reading Tree at My Window by Robert Frost. Um, I chose this poem because first, there is a tree at my window that I see every single day when I come into my living room. And secondly, because the more I ruminate on nature and have time to appreciate it, the more I understand that there is resiliency in both nature and us. Tree at my window, window tree, my sash is lowered when night comes on, but let there never be curtain drawn between you and me. 
vague dream head lifted out of the ground and thing next to most diffused a cloud, not all your light tongues talking aloud could be profound. But tree, I have seen you taken and tossed. And if you have seen me when I was taken and swept and all but lost. That day, she put our heads together. Fate had her imagination about her. Your head so much concerned with outer, mine with inner, weather. Hello, my name is Gabriela Klotz, and I will be reciting the poem Long, Too Long, America by Walt Whitman. I chose this poem because two words in particular stood out to me, crises and children, because in the midst of this crisis, I'm surrounded in my parents' neighborhood full of young children who have brought joy to my every day and happiness to my face. Long, too long, America. Traveling roads all even and peaceful. You learned from joys and prosperity only. But now, ah now, to learn from crises of anguish, advancing, grappling with direst fate and recoiling not. And now to conceive and show to the world what your children on mass really are. For who except myself has yet conceived what your children on mass really are? Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jihao Wang. Uh, today I would like to read in the uh, When Forty Winters Shall Be Siege Cypro by William Shakespeare. Uh, I choose this poetry because uh, this poetry tells about the passing of life and youth, and uh, it expresses the regret for the passing of youth, uh, and also expresses the uh, expectation, uh, expectation for the uh, next generation. And uh, I hope everyone uh, could cherish their time and youth. When forty winters shall besiege thy brow, and dig deep trenches in thy beauty's field, will be a tattered wheat of small worth held. Then being asked where all thy beauty lies, where all the treasure of thy lusty days, to see within thine own deep sunken eyes, or an all-eating shame and thriftless praise. How much more praise deserves thy beauty's use? If thou couldst answer, this fair child of mine shall some make count and make old excuse. Proving his beauty by succession thine. This were to be new made when thou art old and see thy blood warm, so feel stayed cold. Thanks. Hello, I am Christopher Narmi, and today I'm going to be reciting the poem The Warning from Poems on Slavery by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And I chose this poem because it represents a sort of reorienting of that oft-misused biblical idiom, which pervades so much of American political thought towards righteous ends and on behalf of a sort of isolated populace. Beware the Israelite of old who tore the lion in his path when poor and blind, he saw the blessed light of heaven no more, shorn of his noble strength and forced to grind in prison and at last led forth to be a pander to Philistine revelry. Upon the pillars of the temple laid his desperate hands, and in its overthrow destroyed himself, and with him those who made a cruel mockery of his sightless woe, the poor, blind slave, the scoff and jest of all, expired, and thousands perished in the fall. 
There is a poor, blind Samson in this land, shorn of his strength and bound in bonds of steel, who may, in some grim revel, raise his hand and shake the pillars of this common wheel, till the vast temple of our liberties, a shapeless mass of wreck and rubbish lies. Hello, my name is Tiffany Melvin, and today I will be reading Traffic Light by Linda Grantham. I chose this poem because I think that it really reflects how confusing and scary this time may be for people who really are forced to slow down. This traffic light inside my head is always green and never red. My thoughts, my dreams, and all my fears, they all speed past my listening ears. I close my eyes to block it out, but inside my head they rush about. I take a breath to slow it down, but upon my face appears a frown. My heart beats fast, but my breathing slows. I breathe in life, then out it goes. My body's numb, yet I feel my tears. I've lost count of the days, the months, and the years. This traffic light inside my head. I'm scared of the day when it turns red. Thank you. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Schrader, and I will be reading Bleak Weather by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. The reason I chose this is because even when the world becomes bleak and cold, we still have each other, we still have laughter, and most importantly, we still have music. Dear love, where the red lilies blossomed and grew, the white snows are falling, and all through the wood where I wandered with you, the loud winds are calling. And the robin that piped to us tune upon tune, neath the elm you remember, over treetop and mountain has followed the June and left us December. Has left like a friend that is true in the sun and false in the shadows. He has found new delights in the land where he's gone, greener woodlands and meadows. What care we? Let him go, let the snow shroud the lee, let it drift on the heather. We can sing through it all. I have you, you have me, and we'll laugh at the weather. The old year may die, and a new one be born that is bleaker and colder, but it cannot dismay us. We dare it, we scorn, for love makes us bolder. Ah, Robin, sing loud on the far distant lea, thou friend in fair weather. But here is a song sung that's fuller of glee by two warm hearts together. Thank you. Um, my name is Alex Polisco, and I will be performing Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. And the reason why I chose this is traditionally it's about the relationship between a son and the father and the son wishing the father to, to fight kind of, uh, as the father is passing away. And I kind of viewed as not going gentle into that good night as in kind of how we are going to end up after quarantine and after things change, which we don't even know when will happen. Um, kind of thinking about the new normal, thinking about how, what we can do uh, in society to make sure that things like this don't happen again and that we don't go gentle into it, right? We don't return to what used to be. We figure out what's better for humans and for society, society in general. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at their end know dark is right, because their words had forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave, by crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in a grief. They rage, rage against the dying of the light. 
wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late they grieved it on its way, rage, rage against the dying of the light. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight, blind eyes could blaze like meteors and decay. Do not go gentle into that good night. And you, my father, there on the sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Hello, um, my name is Claire Barber. Um, I chose the poem Yellow by Anne Sexton. Um, and I chose it because this is a woman who, while I don't know what specifically she was writing about in her, her personal situation, she would have lived through the Great Depression, World War II, uh, the Cold War, all these really bleak times in American history. Um, and eventually she ended her life um, intentionally um, through carbon monoxide poisoning. But I think this particular poem really grasps her desire for hope and her desire to acknowledge the resilience of the human condition. I think that it's extremely applicable to all of us today. And I love her use of words for their sonic devices rather than just their meaning, which I think very much relates to musical concepts that we strive for. When they turn the sun on again, I'll plant children under it. I'll light up my soul with a match and let it sing. I'll take my mother and soap her up. I'll take my bones and polish them. I'll vacuum up my stale hair. I'll pay all my neighbors bad debts. I'll write a poem called Yellow and put my lips down to drink it up. I'll feed myself spoonfuls of heat and everyone will be home playing with their wings and the planet will shudder with all those smiles. And there will be no poison anywhere, no plague in the sky. And there will be a mother broth for all of the people and we will never die, not one of us. We'll go on, won't we? Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you to all of these wonderful students for sharing their artistry and for sharing these beautiful words. Um, I hope that for anyone listening that the months and or weeks and months ahead um, find moments of joy and peace, um, safety and health for all of you. Thank you. <laughs>